The only real reason why you use your MPC with FL Studio is because you simply love the workflow, whether it's from the arrangement or mixing or just using third party plugins. There's definitely that convenience you just don't get in standalone mode. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use your MPC in FL Studio. And the way this works is just by using the MPC software as a plugin in FL Studio. And first, we're just going to take one minute. I'm going to show you guys the installation process, and then we're going to go over the configurations just to show you how you can use the MPC with FL. Just remember that Akaya Image Line are two separate companies. They don't really have any collaboration whatsoever. So you're not going to just be controlling Q links in FL Studio. This is not what this is about. It's just giving you the best capabilities for it to work together. So the first thing you're going to do is go to akaipro.com. Then you're going to go to account. And then it's going to bring you to another page where you log in or you just sign up if you just got your MPC. And then from there, you're going to get to the screen where it shows you all your MPCs that you have brought. You can just click on anyone, go to the view download section and from view download, then you go to the software section and then you just download the software either for your PC or your Mac. Now, once you have the installation, click on that and then click the MPC that you're going to be mainly using in FL Studio or any DAW of your choice. And the reason why you're going to want to do that instead of just downloading the software by itself, you need a driver of the machine that you're using because if you don't get that and then you go throughout the whole process and you go into your mpc software and it's not working with your mpc it's because you don't have the driver go through the installation process don't change folders don't make it complicated just make it simple it's going to go to where all the plugins usually go to so just stay with the default settings and then when you press run the mpc software it's going to ask you to authorize it by getting the serial number all you have to do is just go back to the same screen where you downloaded the software and right above it is going to say get the serial number and then you just put the serial number in and then that's pretty much the installation process and then now we're going to go into fl studio and i'm going to show you how to configure it a bit all right so i have my mpc already pulled up but what you're going to want to do after the installation process is go to options go to manage plugins and from manage plugins you're going to want to find install plugins now you can unhighlight the first two options if you wanted to go faster because the first option is the same rescan previously verified plugins you don't really need to do that and you don't want to really rescan plugins with error so if you just keep one on it should be a faster process and then if you type in where it says fine right here and you just put mpc it should just pop up make sure you click it so it could end up in your browser so if you're on the sampler just right click it replace it and it should pop up in your browser section mine is right here so now we could click onto the mpc now moving to our actual hardware what you're going to want to do is i already have mine in controller mode so just go to menu and then click on that button. Now, if you look at the screen, as you see, I'm hitting the first note, second note, they work. There's just no sounds in it. The first thing you wanna do is go to the three lines in the left-hand corner, go to edit and go to preferences and go to hardware. And then from hardware, it's gonna be on host to DAW as default. You wanna switch it to MPC plugin. So now anytime you use your MPC with FL Studio, it will just be on this option, which is the best option for this whole thing. Right next to track mutes, there's gonna be a drop down menu. And from that drop down menu, you could just click on MIDI control if you just wanted to just use it as a MIDI controller. Now, if I pull up a plugin, I'm able to play. As you can see, I'm hitting the notes, but you can't hear anything because you got to look at the notes. The notes is at a very low number. So just change your bank. You just got to go up for octaves. And you can go up the octaves by holding shift and using the banks. So now I'm at C5, which is the regular. So you can mess around just like this. Let's say I wanted to really use Omni Spirit and really use it on the pads. Then I'll probably do something like this. But it just seems a bit slower in my opinion. And also keep in mind, let's go to options, audio settings, and check our buffer length. If it's anything that is exceeding over six milliseconds, you're going to just have a lot of delay or latency. So for the most part, if I press overdub and play start, it's not going to record. I'm going to still have to press play in FL Studio, but I can have it on play and just hit overdub and still record. I'm going to show you what I mean in a second. Let's actually get to like get us some sounds in, and then I'll explain a bit more. I'm going to go to track lib. What I like to do in track lib is like to put it on beat. So I turn beat on. 
I'm gonna pick trap. I want to speed it up a bit. Uh, just like that, man. You, you get some sick chops. Yeah, that's fire. Yeah, this feature, the beat feature, makes it a lot easier just to just get your sample chops. And another reason why I still like cooking up on a laptop is just for easy access to things. I feel like a lot of people forget about speed. Speed is a big part of creativity because we all know we have an idea in our head and we don't get it out fast enough, then we just lose it. So never underestimate speed in your workflow. Now I'll get this drag and drop the sounds that I downloaded. So off the back, I'm already going to turn these down because it's going to be loud. It says the tempo is 72. So let's just drop that down to 72. See if it's on the grid. Let's put a filter on this real quick. I'm just going to pull up an EQ, the parametric. One of my favorite EQs. Get a low cut going. As you can hear, it got that big clip in it. So what we can do is go to the audio editor. Go to tools, de-click out. Now we can also de-click in the beginning. So that is just starting at zero points. Not bad. So we could use that, put it on track one, and then we could just do the same for the other ones. So I cut out the lows and the highs, and I actually want to add something else to the spice it up. And I'm going to be using a plugin from our sponsor today, which is Unison. And yes, they came out with a new plugin, but it's for free. But one thing I do like about Unison is the graphics, man. I'm a person that likes to use plugins that have an aesthetic look to it, because if it's just a boring look to it, it doesn't bring any inspiration and they really do a good job at their design. Now, this is pretty much simple. Um, They got hypnosis and balance and electrify, vinyl and ascend. You got your mix levels, filters, gain, and then it seems like you got some presets up here. So let's actually figure out what these knobs do. The hypnosis is pretty much like a detune effect. And then the imbalance is just a tape model pitch wobbling effect. Electrify is like bit crush. And then you have noise, which is like your vinyl cracking, your white noise and all that. And then ascent is pretty much your reverb. So let's actually hear how that sounds on this sample. I'm gonna just start one by one. And I like how the animations change when you turn it up. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good, bro. Let's check out the presets. I really like this vibe. This sound like that could be the intro with that effect, you know? Let's just keep going through the presets. That's dope. That's called Moonface. Now let's add some drums real quick. Cool thing about this is I could drag and drop from the browser onto the pads. And I'm in a new FL update. Like I haven't really been on FL, but they have this now, which is pretty cool, like a preview. I like that. I like the hi-hat, baby. You already know I like the Unison kit, man. This is my kit that I go to. Now, let's say that you do want to control the levels in FL Studio Mixer rather than on the MPC software. So you would just go to this cog wheel and then this menu drop down, come. You go to the middle one, go to process and set this as one and then auto map it from there. Because if we don't do that, then the output one and two is not going to have any sound. Now I'm getting a signal going into the mixer. And that's my kick. Now, if I go to my clap, I can just change my output from right here. Before I go to my outputs and change the other ones and map them in like individually, I would have to explode the track. And the way you would explode a track, go to edit, tracks, and then explode tracks. And then once you explode all the tracks, then they will all be on this individual program. Now you can just map out all your 16 pads in the mixer right here. Now, let's say I didn't like that. I could just go into the grid mode so I can still erase it. 
from here and it erase in the software as well. Pretty much you're still using the MPC as if you was using a standalone. And then I could just click overdub and start it back. It didn't get that first note. I'm gonna show you what I mean that you can still record while you haven't pressed record on FL Studio. It just gotta play. See, I just added in that kick. So I actually want to add kicks in, like right there. So I could just play it and then say over there. I'm going to add some high arrows. So as you can hear, the hi-hats is very loud. To have my sounds in the FL Studio mixer is kind of pointless because I could just easily change the volumes in here and I will rather that. So I could just turn down my hi-hats. I want to add that in. I can easily make an 808 pattern right here in the piano roll. Copy that over and this probably bring up these notes. What I could do from here is go to edit track explode so now i have my kicks and i just had to click this icon right here top right corner next to the undo button now that it's highlighted i could just drag it in and then i could just navigate to the next one using the data wheel on my mpc yeah you may say this takes some time it, it just all depends you know i'm not saying this is a workflow that i use all the time you can also drag out midi but then i feel like that defeats the whole purpose of actually using the MPC, but that is a good option just for those that do want that. And as you can see, that is still got this extra length. You could just cut off the excess and it will still loop perfectly because as you can see, it's still lined up to the grid. Final thoughts on this kind of workflow. I'm probably just going to be using it more so for arranging or like if I'm using Tracklib or if I find any samples that I just want to jump into real quick then I'll probably just do it like this. Let me know in the comments if you like the workflow of using your MPC with FL Studio or you just prefer the standalone or the software itself. And stay tuned to the next video.